Uh, this is such an important picture because at the end of last year, at, at the end of quality days of last year, this is how I felt. I felt like let this is going to be an absolutely amazing year. If you remember at the keynote, that's what I, I said. I said, let's. What are we going to do this next year? It's going to be incredible. Let's go out and just do amazing things in one year. Because we talked about the amazing things that had happened 10 years before and gave some examples in the industry of how much can happen in 10 years. And I challenged us all to do something amazing in one year. And this is how I feel after one year. <laughs> this is probably how many of you feel. When I read some of the tweets and when I read the internet, uh, let's see, in the last year, uh, uh, some of the most amazing things have been, people forward to me things that people say about me personally on the internet, uh, and it's fun to read. Um, Pseudo-technical pseudo -technical babble was one of the things that uh, was said about me. Uh, an idiot, uh, completely unqualified for this job. <laughs> What, uh, 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 I, I take all of those as compliments. This is what I care about. Higher ed software is expensive. Higher ed software is ugly. Higher ed software is inflexible. And it doesn't have to be that way. And that's why Kowali is here. 10 years ago, Kowali was founded to solve those exact problems. And it was really about three things. It was about cost, it was about having a great community, and it was about having control. So after 10 years of Kowali, we talked last year about the amazing things that have happened. Some really great products have come out. Now, sure, there have been some missteps, and there have been some things that, you know, some products that didn't work out so well. But there are some great products that are being used now in your institutions, and they didn't cost $100 million to install. And they're not costing you $50 million a year or whatever the crazy rates are for you to be able to support. We have reasonably priced software, and by price meaning what it costs you to run locally, or the cloud offering, I guess. But we've got good software that is made for you for higher ed. We have over 100 institutions that were using our software, more than, uh, much more than, than just 100. So I think we had a great success the first 10 years. But we reassessed and realized there were some issues. From a cost perspective, it cost a little bit more than we thought it, than we thought it should to develop the software. The stampede hadn't happened yet. So yes, we had 100 institutions, but we didn't have 1,000. Why weren't we getting to 1,000? And from a control perspective, the development was a little bit not as, it wasn't quite as fast as we'd like it to be. So we'd like the sort of the quality of the software and the speed of the, of the development of the software to improve. So in 2014, we reimagined what Kowali could be like. Now, when I say we, I wasn't here. But the Kowali community reimagined what this software and what this community and what, uh, uh, what Kowali could be like. And what you decided to do was to create a company that combines the best parts of a community with the best parts of a company. So that looks like this. We have a community, which is you. We have a foundation, which is also you. Our partners, our, uh, uh, the people that are running uh, uh, software on premise and so forth. But we also have a company. But we created a company that's different than a normal company. First thing is we're open source. And we'll continue to be open source. I mean, the clapping later resonated. We, want, we will continue to be an open source company. And that's something that traditional vendors don't do and won't do. The company, the investor in the company, and this is something I didn't realize not everyone, not everyone knew, knew this. I, I read an article recently by somebody on the internet who clearly didn't realize this was the case. The Kowali Foundation is an investor in the company. It's really, besides myself, the only investor in the company. We're not taking private equity. We're not taking venture capital. We're not taking investment outside. And that means we're not beholden to Wall Street. We're not beholden to quarterly profit uh, calls. We're not beholden to cost cutting just because we want to squeeze out that little last dollar for investors. We don't, we, we don't have to worry about that. The owners of the company are the foundation and the employees. So we're not beholden to Wall Street. But, but who is the foundation? Who is the owner of this, one of the owners of this company? It's the colleges, the universities, the partners. It is the foundation, and the foundation represents you. They have a board of directors, a permanent board of director seat on our board of directors. So Brad Wheeler, who, again, 
not compensated in any way, but he represents the foundation as a director on our board and has access to all of our financials and all the details. And someday it won't be Brad. Someday it will be somebody else from the foundation, but it's a permanent preferred directorship from the foundation on the company's board. So what's the stewardship? Brad talked about this a little bit before. The, the preferred director of the Kowali Foundation can prevent us from being sold. It can prevent us from going public. It can prevent us from trying to change our open source license. Now you need to know when we created this company, these are our intentions anyway. I've been in venture capital companies before. I've been in companies that have gone public. The reason why I came to Kowali was to create something different. I wanted to solve those problems that we talked about at the beginning. Software is too ugly. It's too expensive. It doesn't so it's not flexible enough. I wanted to create a company that cared more about the product than about solving some investor's uh, uh, problems. So we built some structure into the company to help us preserve that. We're also creating a culture. So every Kowali employee that, get, that gets hired goes through this cultural uh, uh, orientation. Every month, we, have, we give every employee dollars. And those dollars can be spent to give to other employees for, for representing these cultural values. They're very, very important to us. So every time a customer comes to visit us, we've had, we've had customers uh, for a grand total of probably 150,000 miles this year have flown in to, to visit us. And every time they come in, we show them our culture and try and help them understand what, what's important to us. So what's happened in the last year? These were the original reasons why we created the company when we reimagined Kuali. Remember the four? The first is suite, to create a complete suite. The second is speed, accelerate our delivery. The third is suite design, create great thoughtful design in all of our products. And fourth, create a self-sustainable entity. Each of these is important strategically for us. So let's talk about each one. First, the suite. Enterprise resource planning. So you, you, may, you may have heard the term ERP. So it's something that started in the corporate space, has moved to this space. Think of ERP as big, huge, monolithic systems. They're systems that do everything. How many of you are using an ERP in your enterprise today? That's a lot of you. I was sitting in a CIO board of the biggest CIOs, uh, the, the biggest companies in the world, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, General Motors, and I was a member of this CIO exchange, and there were 30 of us sitting in a room, and I remember the, the facilitator asking, how many of you are happy that you went to an ERP? The answer was zero. Billions of dollars had been spent on these ERPs, and the value just hadn't, hadn't been there for a number of reasons. First, it's for, from a higher ed perspective, it's typically repurposed corporate software. We take corporate software, we gerrymander it a little bit, and we um, in, install it in higher ed. And the result is, you'll see in the news, I don't want to bring up any specific examples, $100 million installations, $200 million installations, two years over budget and over, oh, uh, over time. The, getting these corporate ERP systems to work for us is hard. Vendor lock-in. So you're locked into these ERP systems for a number of reasons. They're all or nothing often, which means you take the financials, you're gonna take the HR, you're gonna take everything. It's sort of an all or nothing type of, of a prospect. And again, the big money for the implementations. The other thing about these ERP systems is that the, the implementations are lengthy. It takes forever to get them done. You also have a gap between getting new features. If you're doing a new version every two to three years because it's so expensive, during that two to three years, you're not getting the new value. That's ERP. And I say no to ERP. I say we don't need that. We don't need that in Kuali, and we, uh, we don't need that in our institutions. So what's, what's, what can we do instead? Now, you might expect that I'm going to give you a pitch for cloud right now but that's not what I'm gonna give you a pitch for. I'm gonna give you a pitch for what, what changing about the software. And whether you go to the cloud or whether you run it on premise, this is a strategic decision for us to, make it, to, make, to allow us to avoid the ERP problem. So let me give you an example of what I mean by a service, okay? Imagine if you had a server that was serving up data and information through a nice applica application programming interface for courses. And if, imagine if you had the same thing for programs, and you had the same thing for approvals. 
It's just a service. Any developer could call those APIs. Well, we did that. We created a curriculum management product, and it's awesome. So if you haven't seen it, come see us, because we'd love to show you the new curriculum management product. Oh, I said awesome. <laughs> Nat has told me 50 times not to say awesome anymore. I'm sorry, Nat. It's brilliant. <laughs> Nat's from the UK. We created a curriculum management product that are using these three services. The cool thing about the services is that you can write your own custom applications to use those services too. Now, note I didn't say customize the code because we're creating pr application programming interfaces so that you can use those application programming interfaces and create whatever you want. Mobile applications, custom applications, portals, SharePoint sites, Excel spreadsheets, whatever you want, use those APIs. Just don't customize the code, because if you do that, it'll be very inexpensive for you to get new releases. We're going to create a whole bunch of services like that. So over the next three to five years, starting immediately, We've already started this. We're decoupling our monolithic applications into a set of services so that you can leverage those services. So the first ones are courses, programs, approvals, authentication, those are, and there will be many, many more, dozens of services that you'll be, you'll be able to use. So our own applications, like curriculum management, like financials, like uh, conflict of interest module, like financials, like all of these different products will use these services but you'll have access to the exact same services. Again, whether you run on-premise or run in the cloud, you will have access to those exact same services. So you'll be able to write your custom applications, but we're also signing up third-party applications. So we're creating a, a, a sort of economy, an ecosystem of third-party applications that will also be leveraging these services, the first of which is here today, Skaduna. Skaduna is a company, it's a startup, they've got a brand new product, and they're using our curriculum management APIs in, in order to create a really nice, interesting degree mapping system. There will be many, many more companies like Skaduna, similar to what we did in Instructure. There are hundreds of companies that have written add-ons to the Instructure Canvas product that you can, that you can, some are open source, some you need to purchase, but there's this great ecosystem. We'll create the exact same thing with Kuali. So let me give you just a quick update on the suite itself. We're moving away from having just a suite, a monolithic suite, and to instead a set of individual services. So we've started along the student information system path, uh, which we'll talk about in the product uh, uh, presentation later today. We've made great strides in refactoring our financials product and our research product. We have our business continuity planning product. We will be either partnering or building an HR product, and I'd like to, we'll talk about that. We'll have a lot more to talk about next Kuali days uh, to talk about HR. Accelerated delivery. Well, we launched the company. So we finally got the company launched. We got all the, all the contracts in place and started hiring people in the sort of January, February time frame. And we really staffed up around February is when we had the, the, the staff in place. And this is what we've built. Now talk about speed, speed of delivery. We built a brand new from scratch ready product, business continuity planning product a from scratch curriculum management product. Now we used all the great functional analysis that the original student team did, but we built a brand new product and it's beautiful, both ready and curriculum management. There's a new conflict of interest module. How many of you have seen the conflict of interest module? What do you think? Awesome. awesome. <laughs> Nat, it's not just me. It looks great. It's very, very configurable. It's very, very fast. It's a great product. We've built a new financials portal that Eilish has either talked about or will be talking about um, uh, this week. And we have new cloud offerings. We've taken the research product and the financials product. We've removed the state. We've, we're finished with research. We're in the middle of financials, removing all the state so that we can have stateless offerings in the cloud. And that's the main point of being a cloud offering is to get all that state. That's all been done in the last year, plus three from scratch, fully multi-tenant and scalable product applications. For one year, I think that's pretty good. Thoughtful design. So the very first, one of our first two employees was an interaction designer. And we now have four designers. 
one designer per product that are dedicated to creating great products. These designers meet with each other every day, every morning. They meet together and they share with each other the designs of the different products. So financial shares with students, student shares with research, and they comment on each other's designs. If you haven't been to the Experience Center, I strongly recommend that you go to the Experience Center and meet these designers. They'll take you through some of the exercises that we do We've spent a ton of time on site and on video conferences with you to design student, to design COI, to design ready. So we appreciate your, your help and your feedback. It's integral to the interaction design process. And what we've created are some pretty good looking screens. Let me just take you through some of them. This is our visual workflow. So, so it's not the most beautiful product, but what's cool about this is it allows you to configure your own workflow. It's very, very easy to use. It was built for curriculum management for the student product. Now this sounds, seems a little crazy, but it's a word cloud report that allows you to get word clouds for things like learning outcomes to see which learning outcomes are, are being used most, most often. This is just another analytics report that shows you of the subject codes that are available in your institution, the ones in the upper left, English, and you can mouse over those, has the most. In the bottom left, it has the least. Now, I pick these because they're unique and interesting. We do normal charts and normal graphs as well, but there's a lot of, there, there's a lot of opportunity to do interesting analytics in our products. All of this stuff is exportable. Export to CSV, export to an image, export to PDF. This is financial. More financials. This is the portal, the financials portal that Eileen shall talk about. The dashboard. This is quality research, conflict of interest, and it gives you an idea of where we're going with, with design in general. One thing to notice here is it's drag and drop. It's mobile. Screening questionnaires, completely configurable screening questionnaires. If you want to enter in new questionnaires, you don't have to reboot the server. You don't have to go talk to a developer. You just go to the config screens, add in what you want to, to, to show up, and they show up. I think from a design perspective, we've made a ton of progress over the last year, and I hope that you're seeing that and, and uh, that you appreciate it. And we'd love to have you involved. We'd love to get your feedback and have you in our contextual inquiries and to have you involved in, in what we do from a design perspective. So self-sustainable, this is an important one, and this is where kind of there's a rub, there's a conflict sometimes, and I just want to talk openly about the conflict. One of the points of creating a company was to create something that's self-sustainable so that we could bring in, instead of 100, 1,000 customers who were all sharing the burden of, our, of research and development, which will allow us to accelerate. If we want to make progress on HR, we need to accelerate the self-sustainability of the company. That's the whole point. So one of the ways that we do that is with cloud customers. So these cloud customers are important, and sometimes there's a conflict. Sometimes the on-premise people say, oh, those, you know, I, quit bugging me about the cloud. You know, all you care about is the cloud. And I can see why you think that. I can see why some people think that. And I want to talk about that openly. That said, having cloud customers is important because it funds our research and development. Just like you're funding the research and development with, with uh, on-premise uh, implementations. Let me talk briefly about the benefits of the Quali Cloud. First, it's built for higher ed from the ground up. And these are the benefits. I'm not trying to sell you on the cloud. This is what we're talking to the market about. So I want, I'm trying to be accountable to you to let you know what we're doing to create a self-sustainable company. So when we talk to the market, we're built for higher ed. We're lower risk because we're open source. If, you ever, if we ever start to become evil, if we ever start to overcharge, if we ever stop, stop innovating, you can take your code, you can take your data, and you can run it yourself. We're scalable and burstable in the cloud, which means if you're getting ready for a big semester or you're getting ready for a big research, um, a, a PI has a big uh, a proposal they're putting through, or whatever, we can, we can increase the number of servers that are dedicated to what you need. It's a very, very modern look and feel. And we're not completely there yet, but in the last year we've made a lot of progress. We're fast, so we're very, very performant. And in places where we're not very performant, we're fixing it, we're knocking them down one at a time. We're secure. So um, uh, we have an operations team who's a world-class operations team who have run very, very large and very, very governmentally secure uh, uh, data centers. So we're a secure platform. 
Most importantly, we're easy to integrate with. And this goes back to my point about being a set of services. All of our products, we intend to be best of breed products, which means individually you can take our financial product, individually you can take our curriculum management product, individually you can take our financial aid product, and you don't have to go with the whole suite forever. We're not gonna force people to use the whole suite. You can use one component, and we're making it very easy to integrate with those individual components. So this is our Kuali Cloud. We have customers we have, uh, who are making feature requests, our developers work on the code, and we release it. So we release today our research product two or three times a week to our cloud customers. So two or three times a week, we're putting new functionality out there. It's the same for student. We're putting new functionality there two or three times a week. The difference in our cloud is that we put those features behind what's called a feature flag. So every cloud customer has a staging environment and a production environment that we provide to you. And when we do a big new feature, you have the ability to go to the staging environment and turn on the feature and try it and see if you like it. And then when you're ready, not when we're ready, when you're ready, you can turn the feature on in the production environment. So it's an important strategy for us that we're getting value out there all the time. You don't have to wait two years, but you can turn it on when you're ready for it. The other thing that's interesting about our cloud is what I talked about before, the fact that we have APIs, and the same APIs that we use for our own applications are available to you to do any kind of sort of customization or, or mashups or products or mobile apps that you want. You can use the same APIs. Okay, now, sometimes we're confused, so I wanna, I wanna confess that. Last year at Kuali Days, for example, the foundation talked to us, and the foundation, oh, I said, what is the number one problem that we have? What do you think the number one problem that the Kuali community had was to the foundation? Any guesses? Customizations. If you look at the 23 implementations of KFS, or there's more of those, every one of them has their own code base, every one. Now, on one hand, that's great because you can do all the customizations you want. On the other hand, everyone is on an old version. Nobody is on the most up-to-date version, and that's a problem. So the message from the foundation to us was help us be focused on getting everyone on the same code base. Whether it's in the cloud or on premise, focus on getting us on the same code base. And so that's what we did. So almost all of the sessions as of nine months ago for this were about using APIs and not about customizing. And then a lot of people got frustrated about that because they said, look, I, I'm not there yet. I need help. I'm, I've got an old version today. I need to know your new stack. I want to learn. And so we changed. We added a technical track. Originally, the birds of a feather sessions were off in a separate place because we were trying not to make a big deal about customizations because the foundation wanted us to get on the same code base. I think th those were mistakes. So we're trying to learn from those mistakes. And I'll give you another example. People are going to throw things at me because I'm bringing up all these bad things. Oracle. For the research product, it was, we thought it was most efficient for us to focus on one single database, one, a database that's free. So we focused on MySQL. We talked to the KCC about it, and the feedback was, go for it. That's no problem. Individually, the school said, wait a minute. We can't do that. Oracle's our standard. If I talk to the DBA team, they're not going to support MySQL. So we changed. We I apologize if that made people frustrated with us. And I hope you'll keep giving us feedback so that we can make those changes. Because for us, cloud customers are not our only customers. On-premise customers are customers too. And we, we, we appreciate all of you. And we want to work together to create a product that works for everyone. This is the team. So uh, this is our executive team. We've got product managers for, for each of our core products. So we've created the company. And this is talking about self-sustainability. We have a lot of employees. These are our full-time employees plus our contractors, and we're growing at one or two a month. This is just a sampling of the nearly 150 people in our community, some of which are cloud, many of, most of which are, I guess most of which are cloud, many of which are, are uh, on-premise. So what does self-sustainable mean at the end of the day? Profitable. That's, that's what self-sustainable means is that we make a profit. And what do we do with that profit? We reinvest it in R&D. So when we sign a new contract, and this was confusing to some people, when we sign a new cloud contract, what do we do with the money that we make? We don't pay a venture capitalist or a private equity person. We go hire more developers and designers. 
Every time we sign a new cloud customer, one cloud customer that comes on that pays us whatever their amount is, we take that money, we reinvest it in research and development, which helps every one of you. These are just our new cloud customers in the last year. I think there's 16 on there, 15 or 16 on there. The two at the top are just our brand new ones. Southern New Hampshire University is coming on as a curriculum management uh, uh, cloud customer, and University of Washington has announced, uh, announced yesterday in their session they were in the middle of a, of, of a rollout of the old curriculum management product, and they paused it, and they've decided to move to the cloud instead. So let's give a hand for Southern New Hampshire University and University of Washington. We're just unbelievably excited to, to work with both. We have 5,600 leads, so you should have seen the booth at Educause. It was unbelievable. Jennifer mentioned to me that in the 10 years of Kowali, we've never had the kind of reception in a booth that we had this last Educause. It was unbelievable. All day long, every day, we had four monitors, and there were probably five or six times that all four monitors were full. And there, it was 20, all the time, at least two of them were full. So just continual, and 5,600 leads have come in the last year. We've had 750 webinar participants. So these are people that have looked at our product, products, who are your products, who are, who are interested in some way. We have 330 new opportunities in the pipeline. So for us, an opportunity is somebody that we're actively talking to about one of the products. In the last, for most of this year, we've averaged about one cl new cloud customer per month. We're now starting to get to two new cloud customers per month. And next year, we think we'll get to three or four new cloud customers per month. So that will continue to grow. And the interesting thing is 99% of the new leads that we talk to are not interested in on-premise implementations. They're interested in the cloud. Now, we'll always support on-premise implementations forever because we realize that some of you just don't want to go to the cloud for whatever reason. We respect that, and we're okay with it. You're a customer, too, and we'll continue to support you. We also have this great opportunity for, for these new cloud customers. So what's next year? So when we think about what our focus will be for the next year, we think about it in four things. Speed of development, quality of design, self-sustainability, and completing the suite. So we're looking forward to continuing to do those things. In the product session today that will come a little bit later, we'll talk about each of the individual products and what's happened. But I just want to tell you that we're committed, even though we're exhausted. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to Saturday because I've been traveling for about six weeks straight. I'm looking forward to getting back up and starting again and creating products that you can be proud of. Thank you.